Perfect. Okay, we're going live now. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to AAC in the Cloud. And my name is Deborah Woodland. I'm a speech language pathologist at the Souk School District in Victoria, British Columbia. And I have Gina Kakavis. Sorry. Sorry, Gina. <laughs> I knew I'd mess that one up. Um, and she is here to give us a wonderful presentation called Alexa, Give Me Independence. And I can hardly wait to hear your content. Hello. My name is Gina. Hello, I'm Gina Kakavis. Um, I'm going to just jump right in here. So first of all, a little bit about me. I got my BA and my MA from the University of Northern Iowa. I currently live in LeClaire, Iowa. Um, I work for the Mississippi Bend AEA, and I have since I graduated in 2010. Um, I primarily worked in preschool and elementary setting until the 1920 school year when I had my assignment change on me and now I work primarily with middle school and high schoolers as well as I'm a member of our AT department for a day and a half a week for the last three years. Um, I have two kids, Zoe who is six and Joe who is four and my husband Dan is the reason why I'm here talking to you about Alexa today. He actually got um, like an early invite to get one of the first Alexas. And he was, Gina, we need to get this music player. And I was like, dude, there's a radio. So I was not into it at all until I discovered when I was at Closing the Gap one year that you compare AAC with it. And then I came home all excited and I said, Dan, go ahead, go crazy. He's always wanted a smart home. So I gave him like blank check, go for it. And in hindsight, I probably should have random in a little bit because we now do have a smart home. We have smart lights smart speakers, smart, smart thermostat, smart everything, but it has let me play around with AAC and Alexa in my home for the past three years, which has been fantastic. Um, these are my beautiful children and my husband who got me started with this Alexa stuff. Um, my disclosures are I'm a salaried employee from Mississippi Bend AEA. Um, I have no financial relationship with any, with anything else. Uh, if, Amazon wants to pay me to promote their stuff. I'm happy to take it, but right now that's not the case. Um, through the presentation today, I'm gonna resource, I'm going to reference this Google folder that I created. So you can scan that QR code to see it, or you can click on the Google Drive there. You'll find the PowerPoint, my classroom application list, some sample Google Forms, parent letters, things like that. My contact information is also on this slide. So if you need to get a hold of me for anything, that's that. Um, we're gonna get started with what is a smart speaker? If you don't know, it's an internet enabled speaker that is controlled by spoken, spoken commands. Um, you can stream audio, relay information, communicate with other smart speakers. They're very helpful for students who have motor difficulties. So think about it as like one of the classroom's jobs is turning on a lights. And if your student has motor difficulties, they haven't been able to ever do that. So. It's a super cool convenience for me to say, Alexa, turn off the lights. But for them, this is a life changer. They now get to be a part of their classroom and they can do things that their peers are doing. Um, this is all done with your voice or with your AAC. So I'm gonna check out Slack here. Do you have any smart speakers in your house? I kind of wanna know the audience here to see how deep I should go. So I'm gonna check out Slack. Please tell me, yes, no, maybe so. Any smart speakers, any brand, not just Alexa. What do you got going on? I'm gonna go over to check through here and give you just a second. Make sure I'm on here. Okay. Echo dots. So they have new echo dots now, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. If you do have smart speakers in your house, Facebook portal too, I'm going to go ahead and ask if you could please mute. If you, I'm going to be saying the word Alexa and Google Home and Siri and all those things. So I'm going to give you a minute to go over to your devices and find the mute button and mute them. So I'm not accidentally controlling things in your home. I don't want to turn off your lights or play your music while I'm talking here. So I'm going to give it just a second to let everyone mute their smart speakers that are around them. And then I'm gonna jump right in with all the different kinds. So 
So first off is Amazon brand. This picture in the background here is um, the older versions. And then the one that's a little bigger up closer is the newer versions of Alexa. Uh, they have the Echo Dot, which somebody says they have in their house and smart plugs and Facebook portal. So the dots used to look like a hockey puck. And now they look like that round ball, the gray one in the for forefront there. Um, these have smaller um, speakers and microphones than the bigger ones. So they don't hear our AAC as well as the bigger ones. They have just the echo, which used to look like this. And then he grew up and got a little taller and then he turned into a big old ball. So those run you about hundred dollars. They have a little bit better speakers. Um, the prices I'm saying, probably aren't the prices that they are right now because they are always on sale. And with Prime Day yesterday, you could have gotten this guy who's normally 50 for like 15 bucks, the round newer one. Um, there's also Alexa shows. I'm gonna hold one up here too. This is my big 10 inch Alexa show. These normally are around $250. They now have a motion um, hub on the back of it. So it turns when it hears your voice kind of more like a robot. Um, those come in eight inch or five inch as well. So they range anywhere from 90 to the 250. Um, Echo Spot is the little guy in the back. They don't make him anymore, but he was pretty cool. He had good microphones and speakers and a screen and he was cheap. That's the one I wanted to get for my school sensory rooms and they no longer make it. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, they also make Echo, Echo Auto and Echo Inputs that have no speakers and they Bluetooth into your car or um, you plug them into a speaker you already have at home. It's just the voice command system there. So I'm going to move on to Google brand. They're kind of bigger. Um, they have the same setup. They basically have a hockey puck, a taller one, and a screen, just like uh, Amazon does. They range anywhere from 50 to the, the Google Max is now called Next Hub Max, and he's the big screen one like this. He's around $300. He uses facial recognition, which is pretty cool. Those all use Google Assistant and the speech recognition on that is kind of amazing, but it works best with a Google phone. Um, this also works with Google Nest, which is the thermostat for your Amazon. I think I forgot to say, Echo B Smart Thermostat is the thermostat that works well with an Alexa environment. Um, now I'm going to move on to the Apple smart speakers are kind of the bigger pods. They're about $300. They work best in an Apple environment. They use Siri. All of these are going to do similar things as each other. It's just how you talk to them. Hey, Cortana. Hey, Google. Okay, Google. Alexa. So you just need to know what you're using. So you know about how to um, talk to them with your AC devices. I'm gonna look at Slack again here and tell me how often do you use a smart speaker? Have you guys never ever used one before? Sometimes, always, I just wanna kind of get a feel of uh, if you've used these before. I do see there's a question about privacy issues and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. So we'll address that. So, how often do you use smart speakers? Several times per day, a few times a day. Good, good, good. So this isn't brand new information for most of you. Uh, so what can we do with smart speakers? The options are endless. Like I said, music, audiobooks, podcasts, control it by your TV stick. You can say, roll a dice, Alexa, flip a coin, Alexa, compliment me or tell me something happy. You can access yoga routines, there's so many skills and there's more skills every day. So literally endless opportunities to use your Alexa throughout the day. Um, if you pair your smart speakers with Alexa, um, I'm sorry, if you pair your AAC devices with your smart speakers, it's a whole new level of independence that our students have never had before. Um, I have students who have not always have to wait for their mom to turn on their lights in the morning and now they don't have to wait, they can do it themselves with their AAC. I am gonna show you this video from Amazon Accessibility. This is the video that got my districts on board with letting me use smart speakers in their classrooms. This um, kind of shows how it's the future. This is the way we're moving to with the world and all the levels of um, opportunity. So this is just a one minute video from Alexa or from Amazon and I'm gonna make it big and I'm gonna share this. 
words appear. This is Alexa for every day. Alexa, turn on kitchen. Lights illuminate. Hey, come. What's on my shopping list? You have three items on your shopping list. A black and white photo of a soldier and a woman. Alexa, call Samford and Susan. Calling Susan. A man in a power chair. Alexa, turn on bedroom lights. Okay. Echo, call Grandma. Calling Grandma. A woman with a guide dog. Alexa, tell me a dog fact. A one-year-old dog is as mature, physically, as a 15-year-old human. A woman with a cane. Alexa, what am I holding? It looks like tea for a world of teas. Alexa, tell Dagmar it's time. A robot vacuum rolls off. You wanted to go for a ride? A boy in a car laughs. Alexa, trigger door open. A young man moves his power chair to the door with a mouth stick. This is Alexa for everyone. Alexa, learn more at Amazon.com. So I shared that video with my special ed director and he was like, yes, please write the grant. So um, I'm going to talk more about my grant later, but I was able to write a grant to outfit two classrooms in each of my high schools with smart speakers and smart environments to start working on that environmental control. Um, an AAC user can do anything with that you can do with a smart speaker because a voice is a voice is a voice. So their voice on their smart speaker or on their um, AAC device is gonna work the same as your voice speaking verbally. Um, you do need to do some work to get it ready to go. So you would have to program an Alexa page set, um, touch chat and snap plus core first or TD snap as it's now called do come pre-programmed with some Alexa page sets or um, they'll work with other smart speakers too. Um, for early users, I would recommend setting up like a shortcut, which would be one button, they push it and it does the command, or you can use it with generative language because how you talk to Alexa is important. You have to say all the right words in all the right order. Um, nothing happens if you have the wrong command. So for example, at my house, my husband will sometimes change the commands of things. So I used to say, Alexa, turn off the basement lights. And now I have to say, Alexa, turn off the downstairs lights. Um, and for a while that really tripped me up because it's the same lights. He just changed the name of them because he thought it made more sense for one way or the other. So uh, in, in that way, our AAC users are actually luckier than us because they can have it pre-programmed in and they don't have to remember all the different codes to do things. They just know this is bedroom, this is downstairs, this is kitchen, um, and they can know to touch those buttons and learn that motor program. Um, or you can have it set up so they say, Alexa, turn on Fire TV, and you can build a generative sentence, and that's going to give them even more control over their environment because they can say anything they want to say, whenever they want to say it, which we all know is the goal with AAC. Uh, so you, you can use it as a motivation to use your AAC more. Some of my high school students' parents reported that they don't use their AAC at home because they don't find it powerful. Um, and they, didn't, they just know what their kid wants, so they don't need to practice with the AAC. But now the kid can turn on his own happy. He can turn on his own music or his own show, and he can get to it that much faster. And he knows how to do that without waiting for an, a parent to figure out what he wants. So recreation is a function of communication and it opens up all these fun, fun ideas with, with recreation. Um, I'm going to show you some of the page sets here in a second, but there are ways to make your Alexa even more powerful. And one of them is to use if this, then that, where you use what's called an applet and you type in to connect different things. So if I say, let there be light, every light in my house will, will come on. Um, Stringify and Alexa routines do those same things too. It just depends on what smart speaker you're using on which one you're going to use. I use uh, routines a lot in my house. So I can say, Alexa, good night, Zoe. And it's going to turn off her light, turn on her fan, turn on her music. Um, and then we're snuggling in bed, reading her book or whatever. So we don't have to get up and, and turn on all those things when it's bedtime. Um, you can also say, Alexa, I'm heading out, and that can turn off every light in your house, lock your front door, turn your thermostat to away mode, activate your security system, so on and so forth. So you don't have to do each individual command if you're using a routine or a stringify or if this, then that. Um, Alexa also comes with blueprints. 
which I'm just starting to explore, but are very exciting. Um, they have blueprints for house guests and babysitters and personal trainings, or you can customize them. So like the house guest one at your house would be um, to create the blueprint. All you have to be able to do is type into a web browser. So it's going to give you the prompts like what's your Wi-Fi password? Where are the extra towels? Um, how do you start the coffee maker? And you type in what you want Alexa to say when your guest asks, what's the Wi-Fi password? So you would just type it in. Um, I am starting to explore using these with my AAC users as, as stories or with core words of like, how can I write a story where they have to say open over and over and over again, like the repetition with variety to get them to learn where that word is on their device and, and use those core vocabulary words. That's where I'm heading next with this uh, blueprints. Um, anything you want to program into them. When I say X, Alexa will respond with Y. Um, let me show you some uh, page sets now. So I did a quick search on cough drop, and this is two of them that popped up for Alexa. Um, this first one has stop and tell me a joke and spelling, and then some different songs that the user probably likes, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Moana. Um, the other one was all text, which is really interesting. So this would be for a more advanced user who doesn't need the picture supports. They can't stop that feeling, stop that song, what time is sunset things like that. Um, the next one is going to be Proloquo, which is, this is one of the first page sets I made for a generative user. So there's your Alexa, turn off Fire TV or Alexa, open, um, things like that. So the user could generate the sentences. And then like in the routines folder here that I put down at the bottom, um, the kids are awake is all one button. So you don't have to put all those words in, but you would say Alexa, hit routines, then click the kids are awake or turn on the Christmas lights or turn off the Christmas lights. So that's more of a generative user. Um, and then uh, this is the built-in one from Touch Chat. It obviously needs to be beefed up and personalized to actually make it usable. But their first page here is down at the bottom where they have Alexa, Cortana, Siri, or OK Google. And then this is an example of what comes on the Alexa page, the weather, the date, tell me a joke. And you'll need to customize that with your own commands for your environment. Um, and then Snap plus Core first, or TD Snap, also comes with some pretty great pre-programmed options. Um, this back page is the first one that pops up. This is, and then they have more folders. So volume up, volume down, yes, no, stop. Weather is all on the first page. And then if you were to click on the music, it would give you um, stop, play, next song, volume up, volume down, things like that. And then if you were to click on like the fun stuff folder, it's gonna take you to this screen that gives you the, tell me a joke, sing me a song, tell me a story, flip a coin, uh, beatbox, things like that. The more fun things with Alexa. So that's with the latest update of Snap Plus Core First. These are all built in and you don't need to, pro that, like I didn't program anything on those. That's what, what came up. Um, environmental options is my next topic here. So I kind of already mentioned compatible thermostats. Um, you can also do smart plugs to control anything that you plug into an outlet that doesn't have an auto shut off. So we tried these in my kitchen um, at my school for my students and they wanted the student to be able to use the can opener. Well, can openers have a safety auto shut off. So it didn't work for that, but it did work for the KitchenAid. They could leave the KitchenAid on the appropriate level. She could say, turn on KitchenAid and then it would mix and she could say, turn off KitchenAid and the smart plug would turn it on and off. Uh, also for environmental options, you'll see here there's doorbells and locks, light bulbs, switches, the switches um, vary based on if you have a three-way switch or not. Um, a lot of them don't work with three-way switches because it's turning on and off the circuit and you can't do that for multiple points. But there is a workaround on that that my husband figured out. So one of them's like a dummy plate switch and the other one's the actual switch and the dummy plate switch sends the signal to the actual switch. Um, I don't really understand all that because I'm not an electrician, but if you have questions on that, you can certainly email me and I will have my husband talk to you about that. <laughs> um, the other thing here uh, that's pictured is the smart oven. 
Amazon calls this an oven. It's a microwave oven and air fryer. And we do have these in some of my classrooms. So um, all these work together. Some of them you need a hub, so you can't just buy the Alexa. If you buy the, um, the Echo Shows, they have built-in hubs, so you don't need to buy a special hub. And those just work on radio waves rather than Wi-Fi, um, which is actually probably better because for Wi-Fi, you have to send the signal all the way up to the satellite and back down to your house to turn on your light switch. And the radio waves just happen right there in your house. So if at all possible, we like to do things with radio waves rather than Wi-Fi. Um, okay, I'm gonna talk more about my classrooms now. So do you guys have smart speakers in your classroom? I'm gonna check out Slack again um, and just feel free to chime in in the next couple of minutes if you have them in your classroom. I know that there are some privacy issues. So sometimes districts aren't big fans of starting smart speakers. So go ahead and tell me if that's the case too. One from the London Library. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what you can do in the classroom if you are allowed to have a smart speaker in your classroom. Um, there are so many things that my teachers have found they turn to their Alexas for. Um, scheduling, so they can program in student schedule and say, what does Parker's day look like today? And Alexa can say, you have a music lesson at 10 and math at 11 and an appointment at two. Um, and then the, the student can check back on their schedule multiple times throughout the day without having to ask the teacher and, and remember where they need to go. Um, they do a lot of timers and alarms. Uh, the remind me is more of a um, remind me at three o'clock that so-and-so has an appointment and she'll chime in at three o'clock and tell you that. Um, tell me a story and play a playlist. They, a lot of my self-contained classrooms use music as a reward throughout the day and letting the students pick from their favorite songs is hugely rewarding and it helps them get their work done. Classroom jobs, lights on and off. Um, when I initially wrote the grant, I was going to try to rewire some of my classrooms so they could have the smart switches in their classroom. Um, and then I ran into fire code and it got really messy. So we did not do that, but we did put lamps into plugs so they can turn off and off turn on and off lamps with Alexa. And then there's different yoga activities and things like that as well. Um, one of my classrooms is really good at extending and expanding news to you stories of the week. Um, and so she'll have the students ask factual questions after the story's over. Uh, for example, one of my students really likes to know what day of the week things happen. So if there is a story that says on April 1st, 1992, his first question is, what day of the week was April 1st, 1992? And Alexa can answer that right quick and he can then move on with the rest of the story. Um, she also uses it to check math facts. So for example, if they need to add $5.25 plus $3.92, how much money do you have? She'll have the students do their work independently. And then when they think they have the right answer, they get to ask Alexa to add 525 plus 392. Um, they check the weather every day on it. They uh, use it for random numbers with math games, like um, higher or lower is a game they play. So they say, Alexa, give me a number between 50 and 85. And they write that number down. And then they say, again, give me a number between 50 and 85. And they write that number down. And then they have to decide which number is bigger or smaller, higher or lower. Um, so all these things that you can do with them led me to apply for a grant. I got a grant through Scott County Regional Authority, which is SCRA, a local casino here that gives back to students in Scott County and surrounding areas. Um, and this is what I've got for each of my classrooms. So I work in two different high school buildings. Um, and then I'm also, as I said earlier, a member of our AT department. So I equipped two classrooms in each of two high schools in two separate districts with um, a smart classroom kit. And then I got two smart classroom kits available for checkout to all of the districts that my agency serves, which is 22 different districts across Iowa, um, our part of Iowa, our little corner of the world. So each kit has a 10 inch Alexa show with the motion, an eight inch Alexa show that they use more in like a sensory area of their classroom that can play soft music and lights and things. Um, and then the smart lamp, the one I bought is the one 
down here at the corner that changes all different colors. Uh, so some of my teachers have put this at their door of their classroom and they make it red when kids need to stay in the room and green when they can leave the room with the teacher or other classrooms have put it in their sensory spaces so they can have a soft glowing light. They each got four smart plugs um, and then the smart oven to share between the two classrooms. So I only bought two of those, one for each district. Um, my little library kits do not have the smart oven. It takes a little more time to set up and it's very heavy um, and shouldn't be moved around a whole lot. So that's not, unfortunately not in our kits. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the safety. I know there's already a question about privacy issues. Um, before, after we received the grant, but before I put any smart speakers into the classrooms, I um, sent a letter home to parents to get parent permission. And every parent of my self-contained rooms had to sign that letter. Uh, we did this for several reasons. One, to make them aware of what's happening in the classroom and get them excited about them. Two, to open the door about that conversation with privacy and Alexa and ease any concerns about that. Um, and then three, to let them know in case they had Alexas at home that their students' AAC devices would now be able to control them, maybe, if they happen to have the same command set up at home that we were using at school. Um, I also went through some safety settings on Alexa herself. So in my account, I turned off Amazon Sidewalk, which is a new thing that Amazon just put out that um, if you have an Alexa at your home and you don't know about it, it was automatically enabled like two weeks ago, maybe, where they take part of your Wi-Fi and broadcast it into the community. So essentially, you could use, you could go on a walk and always have Wi-Fi, or if your dog got lost and you had a smart tag on it, you could find it easier as how they're selling it. Um, since it's new and I don't know a whole lot about it and it seems iffy on the privacy, we just went ahead and disabled it on all our school devices. We don't need to be broadcasting the school's Wi-Fi uh, across the community. <clears throat> we also set it up to automatically delete audio recordings. Um, most Alexas will re save recordings of everything that's said to them until you delete them. So mine are set up to automatically delete them as often as um, I think I said it on the, the most frequent one of those, so they aren't being stored in their system. There is a learn my voice feature that I turned off, um, and then I did have to turn it back on because our one of my Alexas was really struggling with Proloquo, and we needed to have it learn the voice before we could shut that off again. So that that's why there's a question mark on that one. Um, we were going to have it off all the time, but it's we need we need a little help with that one Proloquo voice. Um, I also turned off voice purchasing and explicit music. In one of my buildings, they asked me to also get a router with my grant money that only, so they set up the Alexas are on their own router with their own internet that nothing else is on. So they didn't have to take down the firewall in my whole high school. They just enabled um, the, the firewall on these devices to access for Alexa. Um, any other teacher in that school cannot have a smart speaker because the firewall at my school will not allow it. But I had a lot of meetings with special ed directors, IT directors, um, lots of people. And I finally got buy-in when I showed them uh, the possibilities. And uh, I wrote the grant as a five-year trial with this equipment. And then after five years, um, the school district will either need to purchase their new updated equipment, the stuff will all be out of date anyway, or we'll not have smart classrooms anymore. But in five years, we'll see where we are and where we need to be. Um, and hopefully I'll get the buy-in to continue it because of all the gains the students are making on becoming more independent. So um, I put a copy of my sample letter there for you guys to see and use if you need to. And that's also in my Google research folder. Um, so here's some examples. Um, this is my daughter Zoe when she was three and a half, four maybe, um, building sentences one word at a time. And then this other video. Alexa, turn on. Mm -hmm. Joey's fan. Hit up at the top so she hears it all the way together. Alexa. Turn on Joey's fan. 
So that's in my son's room. Um, and like I said, I that was two and a half, three years ago, um, building the sentence. And you'll notice that she, Alexa started listening when she said, Alexa, turn. And Alexa didn't know what to do because she was still building her sentence. So if you have users who are maturically slower and can't build those sentences, I do recommend putting a shortcut button in where they can say their whole phrase at once. Um, this other video on my page is a pre program sentence in my classroom of my student turning on bubbles. Echo. Okay. And I just want you to see her. Yay! How excited was she? So bubbles are her happy. And now she can turn them on with a little adult support and hopefully a little more independently as she learns and grows with that. Um, so that's smart plugs. Go on to my next slide here. Um, Amazon Music, you need a subscription to get the most out of this, but this is one of my nonverbal users who um, her device, she uses Snap Plus Core, and it doesn't always hear her from across the room. So she now brings her device right up in front of Alexa and sets it on the table whenever she wants to use it so that she knows that Alexa will hear her. And that, this is her asking for a song. Play Sorry, Not Sorry. Here's Sorry, Not Sorry by Demi Lovato on Amazon Music. And that's been incredibly motivating for her. Um, um, this is a video that I wanted to share as well. This is my district's, one of my districts that um, has really taken off with the smart speakers in the classroom. They made this for their Facebook page to share the news of our smart classroom. And they actually haven't even published it yet. So you guys get to see it before my parents of my kids in the video. <laughs> um, but these are just some of the things they get to do. And some of these are repeats. They're probably gonna turn on music and stuff, but um, this I do wanna share with you. Alexa, what is the weather today? We did it! Yeah, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, turn on the light. Alexa, turn on box light. Good job, Mishu. Yeah. Good job. Here you go, Mishu. Lay down. Alexa, flip a coin. Tails. Alexa, good job, flip sir. Flip a coin. <laughs> I think our first intention was it's going to be so amazing for all of our kids, even nonverbal kids, to be able to <laughs> give commands and have it work. And then we have just been warmed. Miss Anna Marie has been able to heat our own lunch and to run our kitchen appliances, which has been amazing. So in a minute, we're going to have Dempsey add the milk to our mix and then you can demonstrate how you will run the mixer for us, okay? Yep. And get our cornbread batter ready to go. You have to hold and go. Close it and Rachel, lock it. Okay, Anna Marie, you're up. Echo, turn on kitchen mixer. Did you mean Mrs. Meadows kitchen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Echo, heat microwave for two minutes and 25 seconds. Echo, tell me a joke. Why was the cat's... Such a great baker. He made everything from scratch. Oh. Echo, turn on bubbles. <laughs> Echo, play drum by Van Halen. 
Here's John from Van Halen. So you can just see the excitement my students have when they make it work and they're very, very into it. Um, uh, we don't have fire TVs at my school just yet. I am hoping that's something we can explore in the future. Uh, it's just very rewarding to let our students learn how to use that kind of technology to control their, their happy. Um, and I'm not going to show this video because it's just my daughter playing Toy Story. Uh, but that level of independence in our students is something that I feel very passionate about that I think will be very helpful after they turn 21 and are no longer in our schools. This is something that will make them happy. Um, the smart oven we use for the popcorn, for heating up lunches during weekly cooking class. Um, it's give them, they, the students love the independence they have being able to use the oven on their own. Uh, for leisure options with Alexa, I've told you before and you probably know, there's hundreds of funny things you can tell her to do. Um, and if you search Pinterest, you'll find many more lists like this, but meditation, yoga, music breaks, there's lots of things you can do with her for leisure. Unintentional bonus that uh, surprised my teachers because when I sold this to them, I sold it as working with the AAC. Um, but our students have really, um, our verbal students have really benefited from it. We tell them that Alexa is an old lady and they need to talk slowly and loudly so she can hear them and understand them. And it's getting better speech from my students with articulationist and volume issues. Um, and then greater student independence for those students with multiple disabilities. So this is just my friend asking the weather again. So I'm not going to show that video again. You have saw it in the compilation video. You asked. But did you have a favorite use for Spark speakers either at school or at home that I didn't mention today? Is there something else I should be trying? I'd love to learn from you guys today too before I go on to common problems and solutions. So go ahead and put that in Slack and I will check that out. If I didn't, if I did mention your favorite, you can put that in too. But I would love to know if there's something that I am missing out on that we could incorporate in my schools. Um, I'm going to let you guys type that in. So in the Google resource folder, there's um, a classroom applications that takes you, uh, it's a Google doc, but it links you to some different, if you would rather have video lists, there's some, or blogs or written lists, there's some different ways to see it. And then there's some just copied on there. So um, plenty of lists of way, things to do in your classroom. Um, I'm going to take the last you know, 15 minutes here and talk to you about some common problems and solutions and how we've um, kind of trouble sh troubleshooting this. So wake word troubles. Alexa is too hard for my verbal students to say. And Alexa is tricky with that L in there. You can try Echo or Computer. Those are the three wake words Alexa listens to. You could try Google or Siri if you want to go with a different brand. Um, or you can buddy up. Uh, we let some of our students work together. So one will say Alexa and the other will say the command and then the other student will try saying Alexa while the other student says the command. So we've been able to um, work on our articulation with that. Um, Alexa is kind of the, the best person to practice your articulation on too because she's not gonna get frustrated with you uh, or interrupt you like some other people might. She's gonna listen to you until you get it right which is great motivation for our students too. So um, we did change it to Echo in one of my classrooms, the one that was featured most in the video. Uh, and that seems to have worked better for my, my verbal friends. Um, if she doesn't understand your AAC voice, this is a problem that shouldn't be uh, really, but Amazon might've spent 
time and effort not getting Alexa to listen to non-human voices. I don't really know. That, that could be a hurdle that we're trying to struggle with here, but um, you can create a voice profile. So there are certain things you say to create a voice profile. And I just uh, programmed those buttons in and then hid them on my student's device so that I could say them as him into Alexa and let her learn his voice. And that took several tries, to be honest. Um, Alexa also learns your voice over time if you have that feature enabled. So I've been speaking with Proloquo to my, I think Brian is the voice I used on my Proloquo to my Alexas in my house for almost three years. And I can sit on the couch and push a button and she'll hear me across the room. But the Ryan at school with a different account, that voice doesn't seem to work as well in just one of my classrooms. So we're working on trying to get her to understand the AC voice a little better. Um, but it's going to take a little patience and a little perseverance from the students and the teachers in the classroom. Um, so give her a little time and she'll become a better listener. Uh, wake word problems. Speakers, the smart speaker can't hear your commands because it's playing really loud music. Um, you got to make sure your voice, your wake word is really loud. I like to record it. So I have the normal Alexa where my AC speaks it. And then I have a second Alexa that I write in all capital letters. And I say it, you heard it in the video, me saying Alexa really loud into my AC. Um, adult voices seem to work better than child voices for this, um, but you can get a peer so that it sounds similar to the student as well to record that. So you have one loud wake word and one normal wake word for when you don't need it to be loud because you don't always need to yell. Uh, one of my students also has a uh, external amp on her um, touch chat device and that when the battery of that dies, the Alexa won't pick up her voice as well across the room so she has to try over and over again, but when her amp is working, it seems to be able to listen to it a little better. Um, another problem would be too many hits. AAC users like to give rapid fire conflicting commands or they touch lots of things at once sometimes. Uh, you can either use pop-up pages to give Alexa a chance to respond in between commands or you can set a delay so they can't hit the buttons. Um, so quickly. Uh, we, I, you could see that in the video too. He said, flip a coin, flip a coin. So sometimes you just, Alexa will take the most recent command and ignore the first ones too if there's too many hits. Um, Alexa could get confused sometimes. So uh, we say, oh gosh, I'm gonna forget it now. We say, good night, Joe, to turn some things on and he'll play Cotton Eye Joe. That's the song that always comes on. And that is not the song that my four-year-old needs to hear at bedtime. <laughs> so we had to, uh, you know, be a little more, uh, instead of saying bedroom light or living room lamp, just say bedroom on or lamp on. You can change the commands as many times as you want just because you've set it up one way. Doesn't mean you don't have options to change it again, like my husband likes to do to confuse me. So Cotton Eye Joe at bedtime is not, Alexa's confused. She's an old lady, you have to talk slow and loud and use good dictation for her to be able to hear you. But don't be afraid to change um, names of things. That's actually been one of the bigger issues having the four different classrooms and the two different kits set up is everything needs a new name. So if I say, if I'm at one district and I say, um, Alexa, turn the rope lights on, and those rope lights are in my other district's classroom because I said they're on command, they're going to turn on or off in their room, even though I'm not in that room because it's all in one Alexa account. So because I have so many different rooms trying to control the same things, we had to do one of the microwaves is called the oven, turn the oven on. And the other one is just called, um, I think it's called the microwave, turn the microwave on. So you had to be creative with how you name things if you have lots of things on one Amazon account. If each classroom or even each district had their own Amazon accounts, we wouldn't have that issue of um, controlling things across I mean, my districts are fairly close together, so it's essentially across town. But since they're on the same account, um, they know those commands too. So just a little heads up if you're getting multiple lamps, you are going you can't name them all lamp on. Something's gonna need to be called Miss Meadows lamp or Mr. Tom's lamp is how we did it. We used the teacher's names. 
Um, if the AAC speaks too fast or too slow, you can uh, make it slow down. So sometimes it felt like on some of the voices, the, the tamer of the speech was too quick. So we added some periods in like Alexa period, turn on the lamp period. Um, I spelled echo differently on some of my devices because it didn't, it said echo. Uh, so we had to spell the E-K-O to get it to pronounce it correctly, or you can just edit the pronunciation um, and do a little more programming. Um, we were going for the quick fix and we just changed how it was spelled in the app itself. Um, or if it goes too slow, sometimes Alexa stops listening. She has a colored band around her when she's listening. So if your user is using their buttons too slowly, sometimes she'll stop and then you have to hit to play the whole thing over again at the top there. So um, most important, Alexa definitely teaches my kids to be persistent. We don't let them give up if she doesn't hear them the first time. They have to try over and over and over again until they get it to work. Um, and the more you use it, the better she understands your voices. So to limit frustrations, we encourage students to try and try until they get what they want. We use the buddy up system that somebody can come help you. You can say the Alexa part and they can say, play the song if she's not listening to your song. Um, but working on the repairing communication breaks sounds, as I mentioned this earlier, Alexa is not going to get frustrated with you or judge you like other adults may or other kids may. So the potential for practice is huge with Alexa. You can have the kids practice their articulation words into it or practice their language um, over and over and over again, that repetition with variety and really get them confident with the motor programming and where those core words are on their devices uh, with the blueprint. And you, you can just build that language like crazy. It's awesome. And no one's going to say, finish their words for them or, or whatever, which is awesome. So the templates um, that have been shared with those blueprints, or you can make your own to make it even more powerful. I do want to share this um, Alexa Asha article on using smart technology to boost AC. I shared this with my districts as well, just to say, um, help them get on board. The more research, the better, right? So we have about, I don't know, 10 minutes left here and I'm ready for questions. If you have any questions for me, put them in Slack and I'd be happy to answer them. And if you don't, that's okay too. I hope I covered the privacy issue enough that somebody asked about earlier, but Deb. Um, but having its own router seemed to help my tech, my IT department be more on board. If I was willing to buy a, I think it was a $30 router with my grant, they were willing to let me put the Lexus in their classrooms. So, and that district had like a solid, no smart speakers allowed on campus <laughs> before I met with him. So um, the, having the dedicated router really helped answer that. I see some people typing, so I'm gonna give some wait time here. The question is, was there a reason I set them all up under one account? Uh, no, it wasn't to appease my tech people. It was because Amazon Prime accounts cost money. So for the $100 Prime account, I could get two districts and my loan library all using the Prime. And then we pay for the Prime Music as well. And they can all share, we do Prime Music Family Edition. So they can all be playing music at the same time in all my classrooms um, and not worried about that. So that's why one account. Cool. Okay. I'm going to put up, oh, I don't know how to see that reply. Okay. Um, there's just a couple of resources I linked at the end here. So they're in their notes and they are also, there's some more information about privacy, um, the Amazon videos there. Um, and then the how to set up your Alexa at home, I included, that's something I sent to parents. So as I got my classroom set up. If the parents wanted to extend the learning and also have things available at home, I made myself available to help them with that. Um, 
And if I didn't know the answer, I just asked my husband. He knows the answers to most of those things. So it's a team, but uh, definitely helped get everything out. Um, our loan library is available in my district. I have a question here about loaner devices available for parents and to try out. Um, our loan library right now is, to, is available to all teachers and teachers in my district. And we do send things into the home like for our birth to three students. So I don't know why we wouldn't let a parent also loan out one of our Alexa devices if that issue came up. So my loaner kits also come with a directions of how to um, set it all up in your Wi-Fi and what you need to have to get it all working. So, um, I have not had a parent ask me for that yet though. So I think a lot of people have them in their homes already. I don't know. We also have different, um, like student at home grants and things that parents could use to buy their own devices if they wanted to. So thank you for listening to me for the last hour. Feel free to email me with any further questions. There's my email again. Again, my name is Gina Kakavis. So I'm happy everyone was here today. Gina, I'd like to thank you so much for this excellent workshop. I enjoyed every minute of it. And as I was telling you earlier, um, I work with students from K to 12 with AAC and I have tried it with one student with eye gaze, but I'm going to see if I can actually set up a classroom. I have the perfect classroom for it. So right. having a teacher on board makes all the difference too. <laughs> Absolutely. That's wonderful. So if there's no other questions, I think we'll just end right now. Awesome. Super. Thank you again. Thank you.